This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, you're going to take a look at how to determine the approximate area under a curve by the strategy of trapezoids. Now, I, we have um, uh, other videos with MathGuide that um, explains how to find the area under the curve with uh, left rectangles, right rectangles, and it also shows you how to use the uh, modern uh, graphing calculators as an assistant. Okay, so I'll post uh, links to those videos and I'll put them in the comments section of the video. All right, anyway, here we have a curve and I know it's very difficult, uh, I, I, I would surmise, to see the uh, function here. This is the function, so I'll post it right there. So now you can see it. And what I did, of course, is I plugged this into a TI Inspire and you could see that the calculator, this Texas Instrument Calculator, has graphed it. It's done a nice job. It's a very nice calculator. Hewlett Packard, Casio, many other calculators will do the same thing. Now I've also grabbed another document. Okay, so the other document is um, a calculator document. So later on, I'm going to show you how to use the calculator to assist. Okay, anyhow. I'll do it quickly because in the other videos I explained the whole deal. Let's say that we have uh, this function and I'd like to uh, calculate the area underneath the curve from, let's say, from negative 3 to 5. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to figure out what is the area under the curve. So all of this all the way to the x-axis. So from the curve to the x-axis. So how do we do that on that domain from negative 3 to 5. Well, what I want to do is imagine um, a bunch of trapezoids and uh, what I would like to do is first divide this figure up into trapezoids. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? So I'm going to draw a segment down from the curve here and I'm going to draw a segment down from the curve here. Now I'm going to connect these two segments with another segment. Now, that is a trapezoid. Now, a lot of people don't recognize it as a trapezoid because it's on its side. Here's the base. Here's the base. Okay, so those are the two parallel bases. Normally, when you see a trapezoid, you put the parallel bases here, and then the height is that perpendicular between the two bases. Well, it's just sideways. Okay, it's the same idea. So, um, I like to do the same thing here. So, now the next uh, two units over, I'm going to draw another trapezoid. So, Here's one base, here's the other base. I'm going to connect the two bases with the segment. There you go. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing that. So every two units, and I'm going to connect there. I have another trapezoid. And finally over here. Now, the trapezoid method looks pretty good. Oop. I'm going to do a better job drawing it. Now, it's a pretty good approximation because you don't see much wasted space at all. You'd have to really zoom in to see the wasted space, whether we're taking too much space or we're leaving out space. There you go. If I could figure out what's the area of these four trapezoids, find their sum, I'll have a pretty darn good approximation for the area under the curve. So, how do I do it? Well, first of all, you have to know what is the uh, area of a trapezoid. So the area of the trapezoid is one half the distance between the two bases, which is usually called the height, because it's like this and the height goes this way. So I have to find the length of one base, the length of the other base, find the distance between the two bases. So it's a half times that height times the sum of the two bases. Okay, so let's see how this looks. So if I'm going to find the area of the first uh, trapezoid, and maybe what I should do is uh, put this down here. I'll put area, and I'm going to put approximation. So let's see, this would be trapezoid one. Well, I'm going to take a half times the height. Well, the distance between the two bases is two. Uh, and then I want the sum of the two bases. Okay, what's the sum of the two bases? Well. This is where it gets interesting. Well, this space right here is the distance from the x-axis to a point in the curve. 
that distance is really this function evaluated at the x value negative 3. So if I evaluate the curve, the function at negative 3, and then evaluate the function at negative 1, should have given myself more room, huh? Okay, so that's the function evaluate at negative 3, the function evaluate at negative 1. Those are the two bases. Anyway, that's how I find the area of that one trapezoid. So now how do I get the area of the next trapezoid? I'm going to try to leave myself more space. So the distance between the two bases is 2. The uh, bases are evaluated. We just evaluate the function, right? So this base would be the function evaluated at negative 1. This one's going to be function evaluated at 1. There you go. There's the area of the second one. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing this. Now I'm going to find the area of the third. Okay, distance between the two bases is still 2. And now I'm going to evaluate the function at two different locations. Okay, so this one here I'm going to evaluate it at 1. This base here I'm going to evaluate it at 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then finally I've got one more. Now you can see that there's a little bit more detail when you're using uh, trapezoids because those bases and that formula is more complicated. Uh, okay, but it works pretty similarly with the other tech, uh, other strategies that we've seen. Okay, so let's try the next one. Now we're going to take the function evaluated here at 1, 2, 3. And we're going to take the at evaluated here, which is at 5. And literally, we're just going to crank this into a calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go over to uh, a calculator screen, plug it all in. So here I have the calculator pulled up. I'm going to go, well, that was the graphing part of the calculator. Now I have the, the calculating part of the calculator. Now I could plug in a half but I'd rather plug in, uh, oops, I'd rather plug in the uh, 0.5. Okay, so I'm gonna put uh, two times, okay, now I'm gonna put, now if I wanna plug in the function, inside these parentheses I hit bar, and I have mine plugged into F2, uh, not F1, this. Okay, so the first one's gonna be negative three, and then it's gonna be vars, negative 1 plus 0 0.5 times 2 times get a little faster at this as you move on you start to get the hang of all of it okay so f2 is now evaluated at negative 1 and the other one's going to be f2 evaluated at 1 there's a go. There, there's the two trapezoids. Now we're going to go on to the next. Now it's just continuing to scroll down the line. Okay, so now we do our. Uh, let's see. One plus bar f two of three. Okay, and then finally our last one zero. Uh, 0.5 times 2 times the sum and we're gonna do our let's see we wanted 3 plus bar F2 5 and there you go that should well that should wrap it up okay now if we hit enter we get 59.2, which is a pretty good approximation. So I'm going to scoot on over now to the other screen. So now we have our approximate area. I guess I could just put it right here at 59.2. And I'm going to put units squared. We don't know what the units are. Sometimes we're given these problems as word problems. We would know what the units are. Okay, so please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it if you did that. And go back to mathguide.com, check out our lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Have a great day.
caught in a trap. <laughs> Reminds me of Elvis. Oh, what's the name of that?